couple of announcements to call to your attention. There's a Robazoni Community Blood Drive at St. Paul's on June 20th from 8 o'clock in the morning till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. You must have an appointment in order to give blood and we hope that you'll give blood if you can. Uh, all donors will be asked some screening questions before they go in to the donor room, temperature taken, all that good stuff. Uh, they'll take all the precautions. You must wear a mask, uh, but you must register in order to go and donate. So if you can call the Miller Keystone Blood Bank or go to their website or call Karen Moyer. Uh, she is in our directory. Give her a call, uh, Karen and Eugene Moyer, and uh, get registered for that. Our prayer concerns, Paul and Gail McKim, Burl Ruth, Joyce Sutliff, Steve Sablone, Nancy Kerr, Ryan Noyes, John Hopman, Kathy Shirk, Joyce Burkhart, Dawn Fry, Neil McElwee, and Christina Rickenbach. Please keep all those folks in your prayers. Our hope is that if Berks County goes green, that we might be able to worship outside on July the 5th at 9 a.m. If it is raining or we don't go green, we will not have worship outside on July 5th. We will do virtual, just as we've been doing at 9 o'clock on Facebook Live and then on YouTube. Uh, we will still do Facebook Live and then on YouTube, uh, even if we go outside, but we can't guarantee the quality because we'll be doing it completely different. Uh, so please bear with us. We are not professionals about this. We're professionals about this, but not about <laughs> this. Um, so bear with us about that. You must wear a mask to worship that day. We will do physical distancing, um, but uh, we will bring your own chairs or blanket, however you feel comfortable out there, hats, sunglasses, uh, all good. Uh, we'll meet on the grass in front, in front of the pavilion. Uh, so we look forward to that. Also, if you've made masks that we sent off to Lutheran World Relief, we'd like to have some extras here at the church. Um, so if you make masks and could be willing to donate some, that would be a great thing for us. Thank you so much. If you need groceries or meals, uh, feeling uh, lonely or depressed, uh, need financial help, please give us a call and we'll try and respond to those needs as best we can. Will you join me in prayer? Oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. And all these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Psalm 130, a couple verses. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. So last Tuesday, I had extreme pain in my body as I tried to pass another kidney stone. This was my fourth bout, I believe. The pain was the worst I had ever had, like someone was digging a knife into my back and twisting. My whole body spasmed as I tried to breathe and move. After Pastor Chen's daily devotional, I went home to tell Gwen that we needed to head to the Hershey Medical Center. I felt every bump and every turn and was happy to arrive. But when we got to the emergency room doors, we were met with COVID questions and the forgotten reality that Gwen would not be able to go inside with me. I emptied my pockets, giving everything to Gwen except my cell phone and insurance information. I went inside to register, realizing I was alone. I was in horrible pain, and I was going into a hospital filled with sick people. Wearing my mask out of respect to others, I felt horribly at risk. I could hear Charlotte saying, there are bad germs right now, and I wish I could see them. I was so uneasy, and I felt so alone. The waiting room was empty except for one other woman, and they quickly came and took her. A boy came in with his mother, and they took him back right away as he was bleeding all over the place. He had fallen off his bicycle on a trail. Another older woman came in, frazzled to find all the information they needed, having difficulty hearing the registration nurse through the mask and the plexiglass. 
They called me back, they got my vitals, and then took me back to the ER. It was packed. And my bed was in a hallway. I sat on the edge, unable to turn and get into my bed on my own. I went and got a urine sample and then sat on the chair beside my bed. A man dressed in scrubs came out of the room across the hall and asked if I was the patient or waiting with a patient. I told him I was the patient and he said he was the head urologist and he said, you look like you're in pain. And I wanted to say, duh, but anyway, I said I was. And he told me the plan. A nurse came to get an IV started, give me my pain medicine, everyone wearing masks and protective gear. I couldn't recognize who anybody was. People constantly walking by, patients being wheeled by in beds and wheelchairs. I didn't know who my doctor was, who my nurse was. I looked into patients' eyes and saw fear and pain, and I felt empathy. Out of the depths, I cry to you, O Lord. I got an ultrasound in the hallway, feeling very exposed. To everyone who walked by, they took me for a CAT scan, and by the time I came back, the pain medicine was working. I needed a drink of water, I had asked the doctor if I could have some, but none came. I didn't know who to ask. I didn't know who my nurse was. I only knew the one young doctor who I didn't see at that point. Masked, covered faces, fears of bad germs all around, feeling all alone, needing water so badly, not knowing who to ask. There was a string attached to the wall that I thought looked like a call button, but I wasn't sure. Nobody told me that, that that's what it was. And I didn't want to pull something and set off an alarm. So I just sat and waited, looking for someone who looked like a nurse. To say it was a long afternoon and an early evening would be an understatement, especially while I was in some of the worst pain of my life. But it was seeing people who also felt alone hoping to get some answers, some relief. That's what resonated in my soul. And yet I knew I was in good hands. I had insurance. I was in a great hospital. I was privileged, but I still felt alone. My heart goes out to all who have lost family members without being present with them in the hospital or the nursing home. My heart aches for all who feel alone in this terrible time. My heart aches for all those who don't have good health insurance and great hospitals. For all who feel God has abandoned them. And so again, I say, we are not alone. And I know how easy it is to feel alone in pain, in despair, all alone but we really are not. And that's where I finally rested in that hospital bed in the hallway, amidst the bad germs, amidst all the people in pain, amidst all of the masked people working around me, amidst my own pain. I was never alone. The Lord heard my voice and my prayers for myself and the other patients and the doctors, and the nurses, and the aides, the cleaning people, and the other 200 people who walked by, by my bed in that hallway, we are never alone. It was quite a journey, and I made it through to the other side. We all have. No, you're not alone. We join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and, and the power, power and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be safe.